reservoir? Yeah, you do. Okay. Yeah, the reason you want the hardener in the cup first is viscosity. Mm. It's much thinner than the resin is. Pour the hardener, part B, into the cup first. It's thin, thinner and much easier to blend. Yeah. Then you add the resin. The resin being much thicker, if you just yeah. drop it in the cup first, it sticks to the cup. Yeah, it's it's hard to get it all. Okay. And you need all that catalyst. That's how you get the best cure on epoxy. Yep. Uh, another little trick, if you're going to laminate and the resin itself is cold, it's thicker. So if you know you're going to do some laminations, you can just go set it in a warm sink of water and let it warm up for a while. That'll help to thin down the stuff. So 65 to 70 is good? Standard room temperature. Okay. 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 Did you say 150 to 300? Is that what it was? 350 to 400. 350. I actually got too much. Mm -hmm. 350 to 140. Okay, gotcha. So I, I wasn't watching what I was doing. I poured too much in. And when you start to see it to clear, I scrape the sides. I'm trying to get it all blended as well as I can. Mm -hmm. Do you want the vacuum on the second you start pouring in there? Or I want, yeah, my vacuum's on now. It's not sealed proximally, so. All right. It should. Don't worry about holding it right yet. So I'm going to be good for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. I like the idea you said about maybe having to make the holes a little larger to yeah. allow the thicker the viscosity of this to flow through a little better. Makes sense. So on the paper there, Ron, it says it gets thinner. What the, as it heats up, it's going to thin out That's a little bit. That's correct. But you got, you got enough time before the gel. 12 to 14 minutes. Okay. 
is your average work time. Now, what is that compared to, say, this? Now, look at this. Okay, it's already coming down the holes yeah. and started to saturate our fabric. I still, I do not want to jump in here and just start squeezing down. Okay, I want to let this just soak and do its own thing. And what that's doing is pulling the air out of that distal end and replacing it with the resin. It's kind of very uniform. It, right here is where most technical staff will get in trouble because they just want to grab this resin and squeeze. Yep. You know, it's natural. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's what we've always done. And that's because we've always laminated with products that have the viscosity of water. You know, so we can't afford to trap air with this. <laughs> yeah, you defeat the purpose. Mm -hmm. Trying to de-gas in there right in the bag. Yeah. Now, something else um, to consider is that when you have a large quantity of the resin trapped after a lamination, it will try to gas on you as it's going through its exotherm properties. Mm -hmm. So you want to minimize the excess resin right down here and tie it off. And let it be above that so that the gases don't travel downward into your socket, giving you a defective looking socket. I'm just letting it come down because it's yeah. sucking the resin through those holes right now. Yeah, that's just the opposite of, you know, of, yeah, of what we always do. Yeah. That's why, I mean, I love getting in to teach a young staff. You guys don't have all the bad habits that us old dogs do. <laughs> Let me back and do it. For a few minutes here, and then when I do start squeezing, I'm just going to very gently start bringing some resin down. And I'm going to be soaking it all the way around with my hands. It's so probably a good thing for us, Michael, is to watch it when it gets past that tooling, then to start working it slowly. Yeah. yeah. So you don't use any of nylon cord? Not yet. Okay. I'm just using my hands at this point. Nice thing is also, if you don't have enough, you can always go grab another and mix up a little bit more and go right on top of it. You won't affect the quality of this resin by doing that. Basically, you're just trying to make it a uniform distribution as a lower temperature. Exactly. Yeah, so he's keeping it really consistent yeah, all the way around it. You can't really do that with an outline cord. Huh? You can't really do that with an outline cord. No. Your hands should tell you where the resin's at. I'm going to use the cord at the end.
a cord to tie off here somewhere, right? You got one that's hanging on the belt there? Okay. I can see how slowly it creeps, so yeah, you're just gonna go and just stop. Mm -hmm. Hold that up for me, Bob. Okay. Want to hold that up for me? Sure. Now I'm going to take my string and just gently, I don't get after this and string it down hard, and put the resin where I want it to be. I think that word gentle is used a couple of times. Yeah. Or slow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, and I don't mind, you know, flooding some back up into here and, you know, taking it up into that unit. And where I know my trim line's going to be, that's where I 